All right. Sunset League officially opened this week. So tell us about the uh, Corona Del Mar Fountain Valley game, Coach. Yeah, well, you know, I'm glad you chose the song Truckin' <laughs> for the opening because CDM is one of those teams that just keeps trucking right along. Right. You look at going into league play, Fountain Valley had the great turnaround from this year as opposed to the last two years. You've got Edison, who's undefeated. Newport Harbor's off to a great start. Huntington Beach is off to one of their best starts since the early 2000s. And everybody just kind of dismissed CDM. Remember, they had the injuries early, and they thought, well, maybe this yeah. isn't their year. All they've done is like, won five of six. Yep. They're one and only league. They're 11 in the county, so they just do what they do best. They just keep trucking along, winning yeah, ballgames. Just games. keep trucking and uh, doing what CDM does. So why don't we go, Cole, to the uh, play. Let's get into the game and talk a little bit about it. Uh, I want you to keep an eye on Colin Post, the outside linebacker, and Jer- Jeremy Piasecki, the nose tackle. Colin's going to come up and create a big traffic jam. They're going to try to kick him out with the off guard, and that traffic jam, by selling his body out right there, is going to delay the running back. Now you watch the nose tackle. He's going to come off the block, get a tackle for a loss, force a fumble, which is going to lead to a CDM turnover. So again, that's a great job by the outside linebacker, creating that traffic jam, allowing the nose tackle to get a turnover. All right, let's talk a little offense. Now, one of the things that makes Razor so effective is he's going to read the outside linebacker who's going to blitz and the safety who's cheating over to the left side of the offensive formation, which means you're probably going to have at least in one case, single coverage on the bottom. Right. So he's going to have a receiver that he's going to want to get the ball to, obviously. Okay, so Fountain Valley is going to have the safety and the, fou- and the outside linebacker covering the slot receiver. So now the last guy you want in single coverage. Oh, yeah, that's a bad Cooper matchup. Cooper Hoke is, in fact, in single coverage. Razor reads that, steps up in the pocket, hits him down the middle on the post pattern. And again, that's a nice job by reading the matchup, the favorable matchup to get the touchdown. And Hoke with a, a nice outside move and then bend it back inside to get the touchdown for the Sea Kings. Right, now I want you to watch... Kevin Huddig, the offensive creator, excuse me, offensive coordinator for Colonel Demar is going to come up with a nice scheme. He's going to have the two receivers on the bottom of the screen run slant patterns to clear out that area. And then Weir is going to come across from the top of the screen, fills the vacated area, touchdown. That's just a nice concept drawn up by the offensive coordinator. He released a tight end as well, which took a defender downfield. Exactly. So now let's talk special teams. Lots of teams will do what we might call a blood bank or max protection. You've got three upmen defending against the rush. And if you're going to do that, that's fine. But they need to stay home for at least two seconds and block inside out. As soon as the ball snapped, they're going to take off. And it's going to round Ryan Nielsen to come up the middle and get the block. See, they fan out right away. They don't pick him up. And again, another turnover for CDM, this time because of special teams. Nielsen made a great effort there, you know, just rushing. And here we are, more special teams, a punt return, this time by Oliver Ayala. And there's an old saying, the fastest way between two points is a straight line. He doesn't do a lot of East Coast running, left to right. He's just going to find some little gaps and hit it. And I'll just let his uh, work speak for itself. Look how much room he had, too, when he he initially caught the ball. There There was no Fountain Valley defender's within 15 yards of him. Yeah, he's just getting up the field. He hits the hole. And then, um, you know, he's able to do his stuff. So after the game, we had an opportunity to talk to quarterback David Razor. Let's hear what he had to say. All right, David. First game back after a little injury. What was that feeling like returning to the field? Yeah, I mean, the timeout made you appreciate um, the Friday night a lot better. And uh, tonight it was a it was a good time being back on the field, being with my teammates, getting to move the ball down the field get uh, kind of just the feel back under my feet and just got rolling again, so it was a good time. In addition to you at quarterback, we also got to see Caleb Annette throw three touchdowns and Cooper Hope was heavily involved. Yes, sir. What can you say about Caleb Annette and how he was able to take the reins while you were out? Yeah, I mean, he was a stud. He stepped up. He played well. Um, he led us to two wins, and obviously he balled out tonight with three touchdowns. And Cooper, he kind of put the, put the team on his back and played well the last couple of weeks. And tonight we had Russell Weir having himself quite the ball game. Yes, sir as he was able to catch, I believe, two touchdowns. What can you say about Russell's gameplay tonight? Yeah, I mean, Russell's underrated. I mean, he should have a lot more touchdowns this year than he has. Um, He's a stud. He can win any 50-50 ball, and he had a good night for himself. 
You're one know in Sunset League. What's that feeling like, and how big is this going into next week against Los Al? I mean, Sunset League is a top league in the nation, and we love that we get to compete in it, and we're excited to ball out against Los Al next week, and that competition is just another level, and we're excited for it. And then Los Al obviously is next week. What's it going to take to take down the Griffins and move to two and zero? I mean, it's going to take a it's going to take a shootout, man. I mean, both offenses are elite, um, us and Los Al, and it's going to take a, a solid defensive performance, and I think we have that in the back. David, thank you for your time. Congrats on the All right, win. Thank you, sir. Great to see David Razor back and playing again for the Sea Kings. Uh, that's such a big thing for the Sea Kings. I mean, uh, Annette did a great job for him, but you know they got their guy back, and I love. Uh, I love how he shouts out his teammates. He's a total team player. And also, a comment he made, Sunset League is the best league in the United States. We were always saying three or four and got a lot of heat saying, no, you guys are just sucking up to the Sunset League because you cover them. Now we got the quarterback calling them out saying they're the best in the country. Maybe we need to bump up our uh, assessment of them. And I'm cool with that. uh, Find me a better league. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to hear about the training league because we took care of business. Yep. Uh, Los Al took care of business. Yep. Edison took care of business. Mm-hmm. Harbor was close, but they certainly showed out. So yeah, maybe Razor's onto something there. Yeah, I, li- I, li- I like that. Yeah. yeah. So, what do we have next? Up next, well, Los Al Newport Harbor. So this was a big opportunity for Harbor. You know, they've had a, a great season and they've made such progress over the last couple of years. And this was their chance to kind of see if they've closed the gap with the Los Al's of the world. Early in the game, they're down 14 points, but then their man, the dual threat quarterback, Colton Joseph. He's going to get a nice play. He's going to go off the Kojo. stretch action, finds the gap in the defense, hits it, takes it to the house, showing off his speed. Again, one of those dual-threat quarterbacks. Yep. Um, he's as good as they come when it, you're talking about the ability to throw the ball or the ability to run it. Now, they get back in the ball game, and this is what's so heartbreaking. It's 14-7. We've settled down, and then low sell. They go to their man, Damian Henderson. Henderson's going to do something special. Harbor's going to bring two edge rushers so Damien's going to step to the left at zone left, and then he's going to cut uh, right back into the area where the blitz was coming, and I'll just let him show you his thing from that's here. That's great vision and a great cut back there by Henderson. One, two. Breaking tackles. Third tackle. And just like that, it's 14-7, you're back in it, yep. and Los Al just has the ability to rip your heart out because they have so many outstanding playmakers on offense. Okay, a little bit later in the game, only a freshman, Gerard Terry, a freshman, is wow. going to jump the out route. He reads Colton Joseph dropping back, jumps in front oh, of it. Oh, nicely done. He's going to take it to the house. That's a pick six again for the freshman. Doing that at this level as a freshman against the level of competition, the Sunset League says a lot. So that's a special player. That yeah. certainly is. But you know what? Harbor's got some defensive players too. Tanner Muir is going to do a good job rushing up field. Malachi's going to step up in the pocket, but he retraces his steps. And gets himself a sack. So, you know, both teams are playing great defense. I know Wilson scored a lot, but here's the play of the game. Makai Lemon is going to be single covered on the bottom. They're going to press him. So if you're going to do that, you got to get your hands on him. He's able to run by the corner. Now you got help over the top with the safety, but the safety decides to run with the slot receiver who's running an out route. He finally realizes they're going deep, but, but it's, it's too, too late. late. Yeah, at this point, Makai's yeah. got five, six steps on him and, you know, Los Al just makes it look so easy. Yeah. I mean, Nelson it's automatic for and them. Lemon for a touchdown. How often do you hear that? So huh. we had an time. opportunity to talk to both of them after the game. So let's hear what these two had to say. Of Sunset Rewind with Makai Lemon and Malachi Nelson, the dynamic duo of Los Alamitos. All right, you two, you opened up your league tile defense with a big win over Newport Harbor. How big is this win for you all as you start 1-0? Uh, man, it's a huge win. You know, uh, Newport Harbor, you know, they've, they've given us some fits over the years, and, you know, we wanted to come out and, you know, dominate this game. And, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, I think we did. Um, we still have some things to yeah, clean up to on both sides right. of the ball uh, to be more dominant. Um, but other than that, I mean, I thought we played a, well, a well-coached game, and, you know, we executed what we tried to, and, you know, we, we came out with the work. And then, Makai, obviously you were involved, and then Malachi was just getting it done with the passing, but Damian Henderson had himself a big game. He was running rampant all over the place. What can you say about Damian and how he had another monster game? Yeah, you know, Damian, you know, he had transferred, so him coming in, you know, dominating, it just helps me uh, and helps the passing open up. So him getting first down and touchdown almost every time he touched the ball, it just helps us in the uh, team. Malachi, going into this game, Newport Harbor obviously was an improved team, but what was the mindset going into this game, following the bye and following that big win over Santa Margarita? Yeah, no, I, like like you said, I mean, we wanted to 
come in and you know keep that momentum rolling. Um, yeah, they're, they're a solid team, but we, we know this is our league and came out and you know we showed that first game and we got a big one next week and you know, keep rolling through it. So you know we had we had to come out and dominate and we did and uh, yeah we got we came out with the win. But like I said, we have a lot of things to fix and you know, to be more dominant. You know in the coming weeks. And then Makai, next week is Corona Del Mar. They got their first Sunset League win. It's a battle of one and zero teams. What's it going to take to take down the Sea Kings? Yeah, you know, Sea Kings they're a good team. You know, we just got to get in the film room, get on the practice field, you know, work on the mistakes, you know, come out here and execute next week. Gentlemen, congrats on the win. Good luck the rest of the way. So we also had an opportunity to talk to T.A. Cunningham. He seemed to be the big story of the offseason in terms of eligibility. It finally got settled, and... Just a little surprise there from Dan, Dan Albano, Albano from the OC <laughs> Register. Yeah. He was in on it. So, uh, T.A., finally in. Let's see what he had to say. This is Taylor Rodriguez of Sunset Rewind with T.A. Cunningham, the man, the myth, the legend. All right, T.A., this is your first game playing with Los Alamitos. How did it feel to get on the field with your brothers? Thank you. Um, I was ecstatic. I was happy to be out there and finally just feel like I could make a real impact with them. Um, I feel like I definitely made an impact, even if it didn't um, reflect on the stat sheet, just from the amount of times they ran the ball away from me. But um, I mean, if they're doubling me or tripling me, then that's two dudes that aren't guarding one of my teammates. And that's a mistake that I really don't think they should make. Excellent. So obviously your team got the win over a an improved newport harbor team how big is this win going into next week um it's a pretty good win just being the first win in our conference but um just another win you can't focus on it really it's, it's win it's momentum for sure but at the end of the day it's in the past now the game's already over so we just got to focus on corona del mar and um, getting ready for that game all right, thanks for your time, T.I. Congrats on the win, and good luck sure. the rest of the way. So, a big shout-out to Los Alamitos. Yeah. They took care of business. They're getting players back, and they seem to be on a collision course. We've got a couple of weeks for what could potentially be the big showdown, but uh, for now, they're 1-0, CDM 1-0, so uh, looking good. And T.A. Cunningham finally uh, making an appearance. Uh, that's great for the Griffins. I like how, uh, you know, hey, we've got to keep moving forward. The pass is the pass. That's a great attitude, and I think uh, – you know, the sky's the limit for the Griffins. That's a great start to league. Uh, well, the thing I'd say to any team, one game at a time. One game at a time. Don't worry about CF. Don't worry about future matchups. Just who do you have to play this week and take care of business and everything else will work itself out. And even for Harbor, I think the fact that they're able to put some points on the board and do some things on defense. I know, you know, looking at the scoreboard, you know, Coach Lofthouse isn't, you know, happy about that. But I, obviously there's some good things that the Sailors can take away from that game as well as they move forward in Sunset League play. Look, Los Al's dropping points on everybody. Right. This wasn't a yeah. Newport Harbor thing. And I thought Harbor played really well. In fact, yeah. I talked to a couple of Los Al people after the game, and they're really impressed. They're very complimentary yeah. towards the Harbor effort. You know, a lot of people thought, oh, well, their starters will be out by halftime. Their starters had to play the whole game. Yeah. That game was competitive. Um, I do feel Harbor's closed the gap significantly. They're not there yet, but they're certainly trending in the right direction, and they're heading that way. So... If you're Harbor, hey, man, keep your heads up. Yeah. You guys played a great game. Certainly wasn't the results you wanted, but I think they're showing a lot of potential, and um, they're going to be a team to contend with, not just this year, but going down the road into the future because uh, they're certainly doing the right things. Good stuff from the Sailors and the Griffins. Congrats to both. Hey, we had a chance to uh, go to the Surf City Showdown on Friday night. What a great atmosphere that was. We were talking before the game, just like you oh, could feel so the energy fun. in the air. Two rivals, same yeah. town, same stadium. Uh, yeah, the Surf City Showdown, uh, and they were uh, those teams came ready to play. Yeah, the battle for Huntington Beach football supremacy. Edison at Huntington Beach. You know, both share that uh, Capshu Field as their home stadium, but Huntington Beach was the home team. Right. But, uh, you, it really didn't matter. You couldn't really tell this. The atmosphere was electric, you know, both sides of the uh, stands. The stands were packed. The students awesome. were fired up. I mean, in fact, we did half of the game yeah. on the Edison side. We roamed around. And then we went to the it other cool. sideline for the other half just so the teams, you know. Yeah, it was cool, yeah. And, uh, but great, the energy in the crowd was great. Yeah. Uh, Edison came away with a victory, 42-8. Uh, to eight. They looked pretty dominant. Uh, we got some uh, video from the game. If you could go to that real quick for us, Cole. First score of the game for the Chargers, we have Mason York highlighted there up top. And this is just a simple go route, and he's just going to beat the cornerback for Huntington Beach and be wide open, and Awad's just going to place the ball there for him. And that's the thing about Awad that makes him so good. He sees the coverage. He's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup he wants with one of his outstanding receivers. And, yeah, Mason just blows right by the defender, and that's just easy money. 
turns on the afterburners there, gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Now, same quarter, same first quarter here. Take a look at our guy, Ashton Hurley, who joined us last week. Hurley's a slot receiver here, and he's just going to do a simple little uh, backpedal slip screen type thing, receiver screen here, and watch what he does with it. Yeah, it's just a little bubble route, and you want to get the ball into the hands of your athletes in space because then they can do everything else. I wanted to highlight Jackson Irwin here being a great teammate. Look at this block he puts on the Huntington Beach defender to spring Ashton Hurley and get him into the end zone. Yeah, Jackson, Mr. Everything, blocking too. Look, that's a great block, actually. Yeah. He crushed that guy. Carter Hogue's going to get in on the scoring action here. This is all in the first quarter as well, too. Yeah, they jumped on, on Huntington Beach early and really never looked back. So here we have Parker Watt and Carter Hogue. Look at that great mesh point there, Coach. Clean handoff. Look and at the then, offensive line. Mike, look at those holes. Yeah, look at that. Everyone is blocked. And watch what Carter Hogue does here. Sees that open lane, and boom, he's going to turn on the afterburners and, and hit pay dirt for the Chargers. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line. And then, of course, Carter Hogue with that track speed. Once he gets through that hole, he's gone. And, um, you know, that speed in the backfield is such a valuable weapon for the Huntington, beat, excuse me, for the Edison offense. Let's take a look at Edison on defense here. Huntington Beach, spread formation here. Noah Thompson, got him highlighted in the circle there. Down lineman. Beats the block. Big impact hit here and jars the ball loose. And our guy on the spot, Dom Lopez, recovers the fumble. Charger ball. Look at that. You got one, two, you got about seven defenders at the point of attack. And that's the one thing about Edison is they fly to the ball on defense. They're so aggressive. Here we go. Another passing play. Awad with Hogue in the backfield for him. Two by two formation for the Chargers. Looks like Huntington Beach has got a cover two look going here. Let's see how Awad reacts to that. Drops back. Boom. Mason York in the end zone. Another touchdown for Edison. Great concentration. Great catch there. And there's no defense for a perfect throw and a perfect catch. Well, Watt put the ball exactly where it had to be in the corner and lets his athletes do their thing. In Huntington Beach, you know, they were they were playing well. They were hustling. They were flying around the field. They had a good game plan. It was just, like you said, there's no, no defense for a perfectly thrown ball like that. And, you know, I think this is more of a compliment to Edison than it was a knock on Huntington right, Beach. Right. I felt like Edison just came out and played a great game. They I've did. seen Huntington play probably more than any other team in the league, and they're a good football team. They're physical. They're you know they've got athletes and they have all the things you need to be good. But Edison was just on a different level that night. They came out on fire and just really they jumped on them and never looked back. So never that happens back. sometimes. And so you know if you're Huntington, you get up off the mat, you recover, and you get ready for next week's game. Parker Watt himself got in on the scoring action here. Another read play uh, RPO read option here. Again, reads but pulls it this time. Hogue carries out the fake. Awad's going to go to the right. Well, the defender's coming down hard off the edge, so that is the right play. You're going to pull it and now take it into the end zone. And he sees some open space there. Great effort here to break a tackle and get into the end zone. Another touchdown, Chargers. That's the thing about Awad. He, just, he has such control and command of that offense. Yeah. He makes the reads. He goes through his progression. If nobody's open, he calmly just scrambles. I mean, he looks so effortless. He Remember, his teammate said that last week, how, yeah. how cerebral he is and he's just almost, cool. He almost looks lazy. Because he's he so easy to him, he just does his thing, and he's not lazy. I want to be clear. No, about no, that, no. But he just, he he just has this demeanor about him that's just even totally watching calm him on the sideline. You know, I'm I'm standing on the Edison sideline and uh, watching him. You know, while the defense on, you know, people are coming up to him and saying, "Hey, Parker, this Parker." That. He's like, "Oh yeah, okay." Yeah, he's yeah. very just calm and just relaxed. Cool Parker. Yeah, cool, cool Parker. Parker. We were able to catch up with uh, Mason York after the game, and Parker Watt. So let's go ahead and see what they had to say about the Chargers' performance. Mason York, 42-8 to win over Huntington Beach. Man, how does it feel to get a big win like this over Huntington Beach? You know, it's just a great way to start out league. Uh, big win gets a rival, crosstown rival, play the same field. I know a lot of these guys on the other team, it's just good to get one over them. Came out strong, coaches said that, and we just executed the game plan. We scored two TDs today. Take me through that first TD. Uh, first TD, uh, I knew the ball was coming to me right away. I just had to make a play. Parker gave me a great ball. I just ran under it. I just did my job. 
Talk, talk to me about your defense, man. Defense has been playing good the last few games. You had, I think you had a sack today. You guys had about six sacks in total. Let's talk about the defense overall. Man, our defense just locks everything down. No one can get anything on our defense. You know, our line's so strong. Our DBs lock everything down. They couldn't get anything today. But I mean, our coaches just give us a great game plan and we execute. So you guys still undefeated. You guys um, headed to. Um, the second game in league next week. How do you feel about your team going into next week's game? Uh, you know, just got to keep the momentum rolling, just keep everything going, and just play what our coaches give us, and we'll win. Cheers, Congrats on the win, man. Thanks. Parker Awad, 42-8 win over Huntington Beach. Uh, what does a win like this mean to you guys' team? Uh, it means a lot, especially being our first league game. I mean, I hope it's going to be there. I mean, I know it's going to be set the trend for the rest of the season, and I'm excited for uh, the next four games we're having. What? You scored, uh, you threw three touchdowns, you scored one on the ground. What, what made it look so easy out there today? Um, I mean, just the people I have around me. Great receivers, great O-line, great running back, great defense. Just makes my job a lot easier. So. What was the game plan coming into this game? Um, just take what the defense gives us and uh, dominate what we do well. We throw the ball, run the ball, and do our job. How do you feel about the team going into next week? Well, I feel really good. We're getting, uh, getting healthy and getting good. So the chemistry is coming together well. I'm excited. Thanks for your time. Congrats on the win. Uh, once again, have to thank our, our great reporter, Eric Ramos, for those wonderful interviews and all the great reporting he did statistically at the game. But even in those interviews, I mean, how cool is Parker Wad? He's just so, so chill. I'm a big believer in having returning starters, especially at the quarterback yeah. position, because they're so... You know, the experience you get playing, there's no substitute for experience. Nope. And that's at any position. But you remember on offense, every play goes to the quarterback, even the running plays. So when you have a returning starter that's got that kind of experience, their confidence, their understanding of the schemes and everything just kind of comes together. And you're seeing the results with Parker being a three-year starter for that offense. I know it's almost cliche because we hear it all the time. You know, people say, oh, he's like having a coach on the field. But he really is. Parker Watt, probably, he knows that offense as good as Coach Grady does. So I'm sure if there's ever you know audibles to be called or anything like that, he's gonna he's gonna have it. Like he's a true student of the game. Well, remember when we had Edison in the one thing that when we asked, hey, who'd be yeah, the next best head coach? Absolutely, they all said Parker, yeah. and they also talked about how much he's always watching film. Right, and so he is a student of the game. And there's a direct result between the work you put in, yep. and how you perform on the field. And we're seeing that firsthand. And all that hard work is paying off because that Edison offense is just so powerful and so fun to watch and. You know, moving forward, you know, I think it's going to be a very special season for them. And, you know, as far as Huntington Beach goes, Huntington Beach is good. They still got Vandermeer and they got a lot of good guys over there. And, I, you know, this is just one week. So move on Oilers and, you know, they'll, they'll be prepared next week. You know, Coach Brown will have them ready to go. And uh, Well, look, whether you lose by one or 100, it does make a difference. Right, a right. loss is a loss. You get up off the mat. Uh, they're playing Fountain Valley next week, yeah, and big, the winner of that is definitely, in my opinion, going to be in the playoffs. So yes. that's going to affect a playoff yeah. game, a, a play-in game for both those teams who had tough losses this week. So, uh, you know, it, it, that's going to be a great matchup, actually, and I think that's the game you're going to. We'll yes. talk about that yeah, on the fans on the episode, but, um, yeah, that's going to be a, an interesting matchup and an important one for both those teams. So there you go. Week one in the Sunset League in the books. You know, three, three interesting games. The scores might not be reflective of uh, – of how the games were but you know three good competitive games and you know the sunset league like david razor said from corona del mar <laughs> best league in america right 100 percent, no doubt about it so we look forward to uh, next week's games